Hi, it's Dr. Shea with The Drop Therapy. I'm going to talk about constipation again today. I know I talk about it a lot, but it really is super important to understand how to use medications and the differences between stool softeners and stimulant laxatives, as well as how to combine both of them in doing cleanouts. And I think a lot of families get overwhelmed with the different types of laxatives there are over the counter. Um, I wanna break them down into two main categories. The first one is that there are laxatives or stool softeners that are used more on a daily basis. So something that is used as a maintenance. This is really just gonna help soften the stool day to day usually the medication that's taken is not going to cause an instant or even within hours um, of a change in bowel movements. Everybody knows and has heard of Miralax and a lot of my families use it very easily and there's no problems with it. It's just a powder that you add to something that the child drinks and usually add it to maybe juice or um, maybe even just water. Um, I find that the best way to use it is to mix it in something that's warm so you get to dissolve the little granules very easily. And then you add a little bit of that warm um, solution to something else such as apple juice or um, water that they drink. And it doesn't have to be a huge amount. If they can't drink eight ounces at one sitting, it's okay to just add it to four. Um, some kids do find that there is a little bit of an aftertaste, but um, it's really minimal. And if that's the case, then adding it to juice shouldn't be a problem. Some kids add it to things like hot chocolate. Um, so it's kind of their treat for the day. And again, it's hot, it mixes up really easily and really you can't taste it at all. So that's the Miralax. And the beauty of Miralax is that you can titrate or play with the amount and you can be really precise with how much you use, whether or not it's a capful versus three quarter of a capful a day versus a capful and a half a day, really just depending on what the bowel movements are day to day. And so that's kind of the nice part of Miralax is that you can titrate it. Unfortunately, a lot of kids don't like Miralax because they're either sick of the powder, they don't like the taste, um, and they'd rather take a pill. So the alternative would be something called docusate sodium, also known as colase. These are the little gel caps. They usually come in 100 milligram gel caps. And if your child can swallow these gel caps, which I have even had little ones that like five or six years of age been able to learn how to swallow pills, this has been kind of an easy one for them to take because it is really slippery. Um, and most kids um, can take the gel cap anywhere between 100 milligrams, so just one pill, maybe 200 milligrams, but even up to 400. So you do, like the Miralax, you kind of have to figure out what works for the child. Um, and so I usually start off with 200 milligrams a day and then work my way up to three or 400 milligrams per day of the docusate sodium. The next on the list of stool softeners are magnesium supplements. So magnesium citrate is my magnesium of choice. This comes in gummies, um, pill forms, they're giant horse pills unfortunately, um, and powder. Um, and that does help to soften the stool. Um, and like the powder, you can titrate it, you can kind of play with the dose a little bit. Um, the gummies, you can plus or minus how much you take of it. Um, so not as easy or precise of a titration effect, but magnesium supplements I think are great stool softeners. Um, however, I find in most of my kids who have constipation, magnesium is not the only thing that they can take to help to control their constipation. So they might need something else like a stimulant laxative more frequently, or um, maybe like a probiotic or even something like um, a little bit of Miralax every day. There is also magnesium hydroxide. So this comes in Docolax chews. They taste like Starburst, and that's the consistency and the flavor of them. Um, they have my magnesium hydroxide. So this is similar to, similar to magnesium citrate where it is a stool softener. Um, and you can take these daily. These are made for adults, but kids can take them too. I have kids as young as six years of age taking them. The magnesium um, in, typically in these Docolax chews are 1200 milligrams per chew. 
So usually for six-year-olds, um, let me look at my trusty chart here, they would need one to tw two chews a day. So between six to 12 years of age, they can take one to two chews, and then over 12, they can take um, two to four. There's also Pedialyx chews, also magnesium hydroxide. This is more of a, like a vitamin kind of um, chewable. Um, it's a watermelon flavored. A lot of kids like these too. This has 400 milligrams of magnesium hydroxide, so a third of the dose. And um, the, you know, you can probably give them in younger kids. So anywhere between two to six, they can take um, one to three of these chews daily. And then over six, they can take three to six of them. I do find that Docolax chews is probably more economical. Um, and so I would probably go for that. So now going on to the stimulant laxatives. The difference between stimulant laxatives and osmotic laxatives or stool softeners is that the stimulant laxative is actually stimulating your gut to move, so squeeze out that poop, so that somebody can have a poop right away. Um, and there are different types of stimulant laxatives within this class. The first one would be senums in lots of different forms. A liquid form, um, that's a van most of them are vanilla flavored. There is a gummy, Senecot makes a gummy available. Um, there are pills, so Senecot again, or you can get a prescription for your, your doctor, um, has a pill. And then there is, um, uh, oh, the chocolate, how can I forget? So chocolate, um, the X-Lax chocolate has Senna in it. So they're all comparable. It just depends on your Senna of choice um, and working with your doctor to figure out the dosing. Um, 8.6 milligrams is the milligrams per tablet as well as per gummy and per five milligram milliliters of liquid of the Senna. Um, in the chocolate chew, so in the x -Lax chocolate, or if you find the generic, it's double that dose. So it is 17.2 milligrams of Senna in one of the x -Lax. Um, And depending on the child and depending on how you're using the x -Lax, um, they may need just one square, they may need two squares, they may just need half a square, it just depends on how old and how sensitive they are. But in general with Senna, it takes anywhere between six to eight hours or so to generate a bowel movement. Most families use the Senna at nighttime, so that by the morning that's when they're having a bowel movement. Alternatively, if pa parents are worried that their kid is gonna have a bowel movement at school, instead of moving at nighttime, they might give it to their kid um, when they come home from school, so that by the evening they have a bowel movement. I even have some patients give um, the Senna at lunchtime so that they have it in their lunchbox and they take it at lunch so that by the time that they come home or in the evening that they were able to have a bowel movement. Moving on to the next type of stimulant laxative, um, it's called bisacodyl, also known as docolax. Um, so bisacodyl is um, a tiny little pill um, that can generate a bowel movement usually within about two to six hours. Um, this is another good one. Um, they come in two milligram tabs. Um, it generates a bowel movement pretty quickly. Um, unfortunately for some people, it can cause some cramping um, with taking it and that's just speaking to the effectiveness of the stimulant lax laxative causing peristalsis or movement of those intestines to generate a bowel movement. Um, and initially I find that uh, if your child is quite constipated, it probably will cause some cramping, but that means it's working. And then as you start using it down the line and your child is less and less constipated, um, it probably causes less cramping because there's less poop inside of their intestines to actually move. Um, and things just work a little bit better. So Docolax is really a great one. It's a tiny little pill and most kids can, um, can swallow it. Um, or if you needed to, you can always crush that. That's another great stimulant laxative. Um, moving on to different types of stimulant laxative, but this is through more through the bottom. Um, Docolax or bisacodyl 
suppositories are another good option. So if, the, if you're worried that your child is not gonna to tolerate the oral, or if you're worried about the timing of the oral medication causing a bowel movement several hours down the road and you're worried about school, doing something per rectum, so through the bottom, might sound a little bit scary, but it's actually really effective, especially if the child is involved. So these docolax suppositories are pretty small. They're like little bullets. Um, they're soft and they, the idea is that it has medication or bisicodal, so the same type of medication that you take orally, but it's in this suppository and it melts in the rectum, thus stimulating a bowel movement relatively quickly. And I would say within about 10 to 20 minutes after inserting the suppository, um, the patient would have a bowel movement. A lot of families choose to go down this route because they're able to um, kind of time the bowel movements much easier within the day. Um, and a lot of families who use this find that with having the patient actually insert the suppository, it makes it a lot easier. Um, so using this for cleanouts or if you're needing it for things like um, oncopresis, um, doing the suppository can definitely be an option. Lastly, there are enemas, saline enemas available. Um, these are also considered stimulant laxatives. Um, so the idea with an enema is that it is a liquid that gets inserted or injected into the rectum to, and the saline helps to stimulate the gut to help to have a bowel movement and, and you can have the bowel movement relatively quickly. Um, there are different types of enemas available. Um, the Fleet's enemas is one of the popular brands. It almost looks like a little nose spray with a little nozzle that you insert into the rectum. Again, if you get your child to participate and help to use it, it's something that can be helpful. Um, however, I think that suppositories are probably easier to use because you don't have to inject the fluid in and there is not as much burning because the saline can cause some burning um, with, um, with being instilled into the rectum. So now moving on, on how to use them together. So using stool softeners and using stimulant laxatives together um, for cleanouts. My go-to recipe usually is twice daily dosing of Miralax. So once in the morning, once in the afternoon or evening, and then one square, maybe one and a half to two squares of the X-lax in the evening so that the next morning that they're gonna have a really good bowel movement. Best way to do it is maybe start on a Friday. You can start giving the Miralax Friday morning. You don't have to worry about your child having a bowel movement at school with just one dose of Miralax. They come home, they can take the second dose of Miralax and they can take an X-lax in the evening so that on Saturday morning, they have really good bowel movements. The idea when you see their poop on Saturday morning is that they have a lot. You should be impressed with, oh my goodness, that was in my child, that is so much poop. And maybe they go two or three times in that morning. And then again, you repeat the clean out again, Miralax in the morning, Miralax in the afternoon, x -lax again in the evening, so that on Sunday that they have another bowel movement. And then hopefully you can do it again on Sunday so that Monday morning they have a bowel movement. It'd be great if Monday was a holiday, so that way you can do a three-day weekend and do the clean out then. Alternatively, you use the magnesium citrate instead of the Miralax, and you can give that maybe in the afternoon or in the morning, and then you can then give a stimulant laxative like Senna or Bisicodal or the Bisicodal suppository um, to generate a bowel movement um, more immediate, um, and you repeat it again two or three more days to really get cleaned out. Um, and then in between the cleanouts, and I usually recommend cleanouts every two to three weekends if you're just starting it, um, to do to use a stool softener in between. So you're using daily Miralax, or you're using a daily Colace, or you're using a daily magnesium dose. So there is a lot of playing around with the medications, especially figuring out the timing of the stimulant laxatives. I think that's a little bit more for a little bit more scary for parents to think about using a stimulant laxative in their kid. They're worried about their child having an accident at school. Um, obviously doing it on a weekend when you have time um, to stay at home to do it is the best. 
But once you get the hang of it, you really have to um, fine tune the stool softeners, fine tune when you need to do another clean out again because you feel like your child is not pooping very well or maybe missed a day. Um, or if your child is having more of onchopresis problems and not necessarily bladder dysfunction, really using a stimulant laxative daily and finding the right time that allows your child to have a bowel movement um, at a good time. I hope this was really helpful and informative. Um, I'm gonna work on a chart so that we can post it online on the droptherapy.com. Um, so maybe there'll be a little bit more um, organization to seeing what kinds of medications are stool softeners, what kinds are stimulant laxatives, and how to use both. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and comment. Thanks, bye-bye.